Tonight, Hamas leader Yahya Sinwar officially killed. New details into the mastermind behind the October 7th attacks and how Israel finally hunted him down. We will reach every terrorist wherever he is and eliminate him. Plus, the final sprint to election day. Kamala Harris and Donald Trump face off in a swing state showdown. And rebuilding after Hurricanes Helene and Milton. How Operation Blessing is bringing comfort and hope. It's just feeling how much those people steep in faith care about us and what followers of Christ they are. All this and more tonight on Faith Nation. A devastating blow to Hamas's operations as Israel takes out the leader of the terror group. Good evening, I'm Jenna Browder. And from the CBN studio here in Washington, D.C., I'm John Jessup. Well, known as the Butcher of Han Yunus, the architect of the atrocities of the October 7th attack on Israel is no longer posing a threat. In a message on social media, Israel Defense Forces put it simply, posting just three words, eliminated Yahya Sinwar. The terror mastermind was killed during an operation in Gaza. CBN Washington correspondent Michelle London has been following the details as they emerge and joins us with the latest. Michelle? Well, Jenna, Senwar's death strikes a powerful blow to the Hamas militant group. He's topped Israel's most wanted list since the start of the war between Israel and Hamas just over a year ago. Here's a timeline of today's events, according to Israeli sources. It began when troops engaged Hamas militants in Gaza. They found a body resembling Senwar and alerted senior commanders. Israeli military and intelligence services then moved to identify the body through fingerprints and DNA. Sinwar rose to Hamas's top leader as Hamas's top leader soon after Ismail Haniya, the leader in exile, was killed this past July. Now, until then, the IDF has reported he'd been hiding underground in tunnels with a group of a dozen or so hostages, using them as human shields in the case of an Israeli attack. Israeli Defense Minister Gallant weighing in on what the elimination of Sinwar means for hostages. The elimination of Yahya Sinwar sends a clear message to all the families of the fallen and the families of the hostages. We are doing everything in order to get to those who harmed your loved ones and to free the hostages and return them to their families. And a conversation between Prime Minister Netanyahu and President Biden is in the near future. In a statement today, the president said in part, Israel has had every right to eliminate the leadership and military structure of Hamas. Hamas is no longer capable of carrying out another October 7th attack. And State Department spokesperson Matt Miller noted, the U.S. now wants to seize this opportunity to bring this war to an end. John, Jenna. All right, Michelle, thank you very much. And for more on this, we're joined by Michael Pregent, an intelligence and Middle East expert and senior fellow at the Hudson Institute. Michael, welcome. So let's just start. Please put this into context for us. How much does Sinwar's death hurt Hamas? It's, it's huge. Thanks for having me. So this is not only the leader of, of the military wing of Hamas and now the leader of Hamas. This is also the person who planned the October 7th operation. Um, Sinwar's death is is so so big. It's the equivalent we've heard. It's the, it's the equivalent of, of killing Osama bin Laden. Uh, the the organization has already been degraded. Now now Sinwar's dead, and we have to remember that part of the ceasefire negotiations that the United States was trying to press Israel on was to keep Israel from targeting uh, Yahya Sinwar. Think about that for a second. If Israel listened to this administration, he would be alive. Yahya Simwar would be alive, Haniye would be alive, Nasrallah from Lebanese Hezbollah would be alive, and the IDF would not be in southern Lebanon dismantling Hezbollah's offensive capabilities that have been punishing northern Israel. So, so this is huge. And what we're likely to see now is what happens next with a leader. Is the leader more violent? Just like with Al-Qaeda, mm. when leader goes down, the next leader has to be more violent in order to, to shore up support 
within the terrorist organization. So confirming his death earlier this afternoon, Vice President Harris said Sinwar's killing is a chance to finally end the war in Gaza. So, Michael, what comes next? Do you think this now adds pressure for Israel to hasten ceasefire discussions, as you just mentioned? Because reportedly negotiations for a deal uh, were frozen in part because of Sinwar's hardline position. Right. Sinwar did not want to release hostages. Uh, he was criticized by Hamas fighters for hiding in this war, hiding in the tunnel networks with, with hostages. He was killed above ground. I think that means that he felt the pressure from his organization to be more involved in the fight. And this was a, a chance operation. With, uh, with uh, Vice President Harris's comments on this, it, we can't be that optimistic that with Sinwar killed that somehow this organization is, is now going to give up, is going to give up the hostages and surrender. We can't hope that that happens, right? But we need to look at who's going to replace Sinwar. And I, and I do believe that the IDF will target the next replacement, regardless of who mm -hmm. that is. Yeah. Um, we know, you know, Israel, of course, isn't only fighting Hamas. What message, Michael, does this send to Hezbollah in the north and in the greater region, Iran? Well, it definitely sends a message to Tehran. I mean, they've lost. Think about what Iran has lost because of Yahya Sinwar. Yahya Sinwar has cost them Nasrallah of Lebanese Hezbollah. Uh, the Israeli Defense Force has basically degraded the capable leadership all the way down to the squad level in Hezbollah with that beeper, uh, pager, phone, and radio attack. That was huge. That would be the equivalent of a U.S. Army division standing on a parade field and every key leader going down with an injury simultaneously. Israel did that across 10 10,000 man divisions within Hezbollah, decimated the organization. So Tehran has lost uh, military capability from Hezbollah. They've lost military ca capability of Hamas, a deterrent capability. Mm -hmm. We have to remember Tehran relies on Hezbollah as a deterrent to keep Israel from striking inside of Iran. And yeah. we now know that Israel is going to do that as well. So Tehran has lost a lot here. All right, Michael Pregent, we are out of time, but we appreciate yes. you coming on tonight. Michael Pregent sure. with the Hudson Institute, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. Well, Thank meanwhile, you. as Israel plans its response to Iran's recent ballistic missile attack earlier this month, world leaders urge restraint. Still, not everyone agrees. As CBN senior international correspondent George Thomas reports, some in Iran are openly calling for Israel to take action against Tehran's brutal regime. Crown Prince Reza Pahlavi is urging Iran's Middle East neighbors to stand against Tehran's influence help support Israel's war efforts and bring down the dictatorship. The regime in Tehran is responsible for the deaths of hundreds of thousands of innocents, Iranians, Arabs and Israelis, Christians, Muslims and Jews. Pahlavi, the son of Iran's last Shah, went on social media saying most Iranians want to see their own oppressive government removed. So I say to you, our friends across the Middle East. Our region deserves so much better. But in order to succeed, first, this regime that has held us hostage for nearly half a century must go. While some Iranians have supported military action against Israel, if Israel reacts to Iran's action, Iran will respond again and completely crush Israel. Pahlavi claims the majority of his countrymen would welcome targeted action against the regime. He tells Iranians the real enemy is their own government, led by Ali Khamenei. The tyrants in Tehran couches his warmongering in Iranian nationalism, but he does not speak for our nation. The crimes his regime has committed against you, our neighbors, are an affront to Iranians and our values. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu recently expressed hope for peace between his country and Iran, suggesting that a future free Iran could lead to a new relationship between the two nations. When Iran is finally free, and that moment will come a lot sooner than people think, everything will be different. Our two ancient peoples, the Jewish people and the Persian people, will finally be at peace. Our two countries, Israel and Iran, 
will be at peace. Transform Iran brings the transformative power of the gospel to every corner of Iran. Lana Silk runs so Transform Iran, a ministry that operates inside the country, sharing the message of the gospel. She says recent uprisings against the regime demonstrate that Iranians want political change like never before, even to the point of dying for it. It's a tough fight. They're willing to fight it. They're willing to pay whatever it takes to take down their government. We've seen Iranian people take to social media and invite Israel to attack them on their own soil. Videos from Iran showed people singing and dancing following Hassan Nasrallah's assassination. Silk adds that most Iranians do not share the government's animosity toward Israel. Since taking power 45 years ago, the regime's clerics have labeled the United States as the Great Satan and Israel as the Little Satan. I was brought up in the country and I was conditioned to hate Israel and America. As a schoolgirl, we had to wake up every morning and chant death to America death to Israel, all our teaching, our education, all the propaganda and the news on the walls, everything was set up to have us hate these two countries. And yet we don't, no matter how hard the government tries, they cannot turn their people against these countries. During an interview with CBN News, Pahlavi said despite Iran's ongoing violations of religious freedom, people are turning to faith, especially Christianity, like never before. Discrimination started against religious uh, minorities. The Jews were the first, followed by the Baha'is. Lately, it's been mostly the Christians that are targeted. Iran has probably right now the fastest growing faith in uh, Christianity than any other faith that, that the country has had. We have hundreds of underground churches. Silk says the potential for war is driving a sense of urgency among underground Christians in Iran to share their faith. We're talking about war. We're talking about uh, really uh, unimaginable suffering coming to Iran shortly. So there is a sense of we better be quick to make sure all the people that we love know what Jesus, who Jesus is and what he's done for them before it's too late for them. George Thomas, CBN News. Thank you very much, George. Well, here at home, a new report is calling for an overhaul at the Secret Service. It comes after July's assassination attempt against Donald Trump. The review from an independent panel ordered by President Biden finds the agency has become, quote, bureaucratic and complacent. The panel recommends the Secret Service shake up its current leadership with replacements from the private sector. The 52-page report says many of the issues outlined point back to the service's culture of complacency. And that's the perspective, and that, ra rather, that the, the perspective of new leadership will help with a resolution. From unemployment to inflation, the day's economic news when Faith Nation returns. Welcome back. In economic news tonight, American consumers aren't shying away from spending. A new report today from the Commerce Department shows September retail sales rose more than expected, boosted by online shopping and more restaurant and grocery spending. Retail sales hit 0.4 percent in September. That is up point, uh, from 0.1 percent the, the previous month. Today's report comes amid good news on the unemployment front. New numbers from the Labor Department show new unemployment benefit applications saw the biggest drop in three months. Well, Mark Cameron joins us for more now. He is Senior Economic Analyst and Washington Bureau Chief at Bankrate. Mark, welcome to you. It's always good to have you. So let's start with retail sales. We saw better than expected September numbers. How do you read that for the economy as a whole? The consumer, which is a good example of the U.S. economy, broadly speaking, responsible for more than two-thirds of all U.S. economic activity, has been more resilient and robust than had been expected all along. And on a year-over-year -year basis, what we call sort of a control group of retail sales, excluding uh, gasoline and automobile sales, try to get an idea for sort of the core piece of retail sales, are up 3.7% from a year ago. So it's obviously higher than the recent rate of inflation. So credit the consumer for hanging in there. Uh, more consumers are putting uh, debt onto credit cards as well. Uh, that's not 
entirely uh, explaining how we got here with respect to this better than expected showing. Uh, but I think we still have some restrained expectations for the upcoming holiday shopping season because of still elevated prices, because the job market has been cooling but is not cool. Uh, and so we probably need to restrain our expectations going forward. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about the holiday spending season, Mark. Um, what, what are you expecting, if you can go into a little more detail on that? I think probably an increase uh, that will be the smallest in about six years translated to perhaps a rise that's uh, similar to what we saw here with the uh, latest retail sales uh, on a monthly basis. Uh, we know that uh, many Americans are uh, struggling to pay for necessities. Uh, some prices have begun to come down in the good space, but many services prices remain elevated. And I think it's the case for those who celebrate the holidays. Uh, they don't want to sort of cancel uh, their spending, but they may be more value conscious than usual. And ultimately, as we know, the spending is what retailers like, but it's not the reason for the holidays. Everyone's always looking for a good value there, Mark. Uh, no surprise to you, we're just a few weeks out from an election that hinges heavily on the economy. Uh, what are some of the biggest economic concerns for Americans ahead of Election Day? I, I know you just mentioned necessities, but what's weighing on their minds in the minute or so that we have left? Perfect timing. We just did a survey of Americans on what they see as the biggest issues in the presidential campaign with respect to the economy, our wheelhouse of bank rate. The number one issue is inflation, but where people come down on that question is heavily influenced by their political identification. Republicans broadly think the economy is on the wrong track. Democrats broadly think that it's on the right track. After that, among their chief concerns are government spending, number two for Republicans, and uh, affordable housing and health care costs rank high as well. All right. Mark Hamrick with Bankrate. Good to see you this Thursday. Thank you so much for coming on, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Uh, thank you, John and Jen. As cleanup crews continue to pick up the pieces left by back-to-back -back hurricanes, aid groups like CBN's Operation Blessing are on the ground offering help in more ways than one. Welcome back. Residents in North Carolina and Florida are trying to rebuild after Hurricanes Milton and Helene slammed the southeast. As the cleanup continues, crews in the Tar Heel State are searching for scores of people who are still missing. The federal government says it has approved nearly $2 billion in aid to people affected by the hurricanes. The funds will go towards essentials like food, diapers, and cleanup efforts. The White House faces pressure to prove it's helping storm victims amid rampant misinformation about the government's response. Well, as cleanup efforts continue, families must grapple with the scope, the sheer scope of the devastation. Yeah, CBN's Operation Blessing is on the ground in western North Carolina, providing hot meals and hope to people struggling to recover. Lori Johnson brings us their stories. Although Hurricane Helene tore through North Carolina last month, survivors who lost everything they own are just beginning the difficult task of rebuilding their lives. CBN's Operation Blessing is helping them in every way, including spiritually. Julian Moore remembers friends who lost their lives after heavy rain and high winds from Hurricane Helene swept away their homes in Chimney Rock and other communities near Asheville. Quite a few of our neighbors had to, they didn't have anywhere to go, they couldn't get out, and their relatives retrieved their bodies from the creeks and rivers. Power to remote areas won't be restored for another month or so, and many victims don't have drinking water. Operation Blessing is filling in the gaps, first by bringing folks together around the table. There is absolutely no price you can put on what it feels like to sit down, have a warm meal, see neighbors, see people smiling. You know, praise God, you're alive. People here no longer have to worry about where their next meal will come from. So Operation is Blessing, what it's brought to me is just knowing that we're not, that my friends in the community, we're not gonna have to want for food. We know Operation Blessing is here and we need you, we love you. In addition to hot meals, Operation Blessing is giving away packaged foods and non-perishable items that people can take home. 
Workers also provide drinking water and building supplies, all in the name of Jesus. It's just feeling how much those people steeped in faith care about us and what followers of Christ they are. I'm so appreciative of the entire community, and it's easy to see those that are grounded in their faith. Joe Bryant evacuated his home by the river and returned to find it completely washed away. I was looking, I was like, where's my house at? I just stood up there in the road for 45 minutes. It's like, I ain't got no house. <laughs> I ain't got no house. Operation Blessing workers found Joe living in a tiny tent on his plot of land. They prayed with him and then found him a temporary house. Everybody needs help sometime. So now I can just focus on rebuilding my house. In addition to providing tangible, life-saving help, Operation Blessing also provides manpower, like people to help clear trees from roads and property. We need more help. We need more support. If you have time, we would love it. If you have donations, we will take it and we will get it in the hands of the people that need it. So while rebuilding parts of Western North Carolina will take a long time, Operation Blessing is in it for the long haul, demonstrating the love of Jesus. Lori Johnson, CBN News. Thank you, Lori. And CBN's Operation Blessing will continue to work and bring critical aid and hope to hurricane victims in North Carolina and Florida. To learn more about this work and how you can help, please visit op.org. Still ahead, final preparations for the reopening of a Paris landmark. Stay tuned. Well, finally tonight, a good step. One more step closer to the official reopening of the historic Notre Dame Cathedral. Yeah, a truck carrying new furnishings arrived this week at the Paris landmark. A 2019 fire, you'll remember, damaged much of the cathedral, destroying the roof and spire and all underneath when it collapsed. Because of the damage, some adorning elements are getting an upgrade, including the cathedral's altar, bishop's seat, and baptistry. Their recreation was entrusted to a French sculptor who chose to work with bronze to fit in with the finishings of the nearly 1,000-year-old building. About 15 million visitors in a year are expected at Notre Dame after it reopens on December 8th, just two months from now. You know, it's a huge accomplishment given immediately after the fire there was talk that they weren't even sure if they were ever going to yeah. be able to rebuild Notre Dame. So, yeah. huge accomplishment. Yeah, it's a, it's a great day for the world. This is a, a historic, amazing landmark for the world. Absolutely. Thanks for watching. Have a great night.